Hello, my friends. I'm Pastor Doug, and it's my joy to visit with you again. Wow, can you believe it's almost Christmas? I still have a little bit of shopping to do. What about you? I hope uh, you're really uh, looking forward to um, some time with family and friends. Uh, before I get started today, just wanted to uh, give you a quick update on my sister. Uh, in fact, as we speak, uh, Terry is having another um, chemo treatment. Um, kind of a challenge uh, this time for her as she's undergoing um, this treatment during uh, this time of holiday. Um, but say just uh, thank you for your prayers and your support uh, of her uh, through this uh, long time of treatments and surgery. Um, after this uh, particular uh, round of treatments, she just has uh, two more treatments left. Um, and then we're hoping uh, that that may be the end of uh, what's needed uh, to care for this. Um, I just thank you for it and um, just pray for her courage and strength um, as she just uh, has been so faithful in working through this with uh, her medical team. Uh, we've been looking uh, in our devotion and during our uh, morning sermons at Christmas through the eyes of Joseph. I really have enjoyed sharing with you and being able to uh, embellish a little bit more about this theme. And today uh, we take and look at this part of the story, um, the last part of this story, as we actually look at the journey that Mary and Joseph took as they traveled from Nazareth to Bethlehem. Let's look at the scripture that tells us about that, and that's found in Luke 2, verses 1 through 5. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went down to their towns to be registered. Joseph, Joseph also went down from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. You know, we don't often talk about the actual journey, but I believe from studying um, about this journey and reading uh, Adam Hamilton's book, um, that it probably was about a nine-day journey for them uh, to cover this 70-mile trip. You know, as I think about our area, maybe the best comparison to just get an idea of how this trip was might be to think about covering a similar length of uh, the Appalachian Trail to get a sense of the ruggedness, the hilliness, uh, the difficulty of such a journey. But no matter how you might want to think about it in your mind, we just want to get a clear picture of what those days actually looked like leading up to Jesus' birth uh, for Mary and Joseph and the difficult journey that they took. The other thing that seems obvious but is worth just us pausing and remembering is just how uncomfortable Mary was, was at this point in her pregnancy. As we were talking about this during our in our Sunday school class last week, all the mothers remind us that how just how amazingly tough those last few weeks of pregnancy are, and they couldn't even imagine getting on a ducky for such a journey. I just very recently read a devotion about a young mother who lived out in the country and had over an hour's drive uh, to the hospital. When she finally went into labor and drove by car to the hospital, she said she couldn't believe how uncomfortable that ride in the car was. And then she began to try and think then how courageous and strong Mary must have been to take such a long journey by foot uh, over such a hilly and dusty terrain. We begin to get a sense of just how strong and, and faithful Mary was to work through all of that. And then we don't want to lose we don't want to lose sight of why they had to take this trip in the first place because there was a census that the Romans demanded. It wasn't merely a head counting like we think of a census, but it was how they came up with taxation and it was deter it was something that was not optional. If Joseph didn't go, he risked serious penalty. People like Joseph could be imprisoned they could lose their property, be scourged, or even put into slavery. And so for Joseph, 
there was a real urgency to return home and to comply with this edict. Now, the thing that I want us to ponder is how do we respond when you and I have to take unwanted journeys? Clearly, Mary and Joseph took an unwanted journey, and it took great courage, perseverance, and faith for them to take that arduous journey way back then. But you know what? When we think about our own lives, we too take on one in journeys. Maybe perhaps when we have to move to a new job, when we go through a divorce, when we have cancer, when we lose a loved one, those are all examples of unwanted journeys. How do you and I respond? How can we learn from Mary and Joseph and their story? I'd like to suggest that Mary and Joseph's unwanted journey actually offers us some important reminders that we can apply to our lives today. And I think my own sister has modeled some of these very same lessons. So I want you to remember a few things. Number one, God will sustain us. I am sure Mary had no idea how she would make it through that tough journey. But she trusted God, and he provided her the strength for all 70 miles of that journey. Two, God will care for us, just like a shepherd cares for his sheep. You know, my friends, when we have issues and, and, and struggles, we need to cast our burdens to God. We need to look to God to guide us and to help us through our journey. We make a mistake if we think we have to carry it by ourselves because we don't. Rather, we need to turn to God and share our burdens with him. And then finally, we need to remember that God is with us. You know, in fact, we're told that one of Jesus' name is Emmanuel, God with us. There are times in our unwanted journeys that we feel isolated, alone, and we certainly feel frightened. And my friends, these are the times we need to remind ourselves that God is with us. These are the times we need to go to God in prayer and tell God just how we feel and ask him to comfort us, to care for us, to strengthen us, to just help us, under, to help us get through that challenging moment that we're facing. And I think one of the ways we get through those moments is by reminding ourselves that we're not alone, but that God is with us. And you know what's the good news, my friends? Mary and Joseph safely made their way to Bethlehem, not on their own, but with God's help. And you and I will also find our way through unwanted journeys as we turn to God who will sustain us, care for us, and most importantly, be with us all the way. Remember that, and he'll be with you through any unwanted journeys you need to take. Amen. I just have one announcement today to share with you, and really not even an announcement, a personal invitation. I'd like to personally invite you to our Christmas Eve service tomorrow night at 7 p.m. I'll be sharing the book, Clopper the Christmas Donkey with the Children, we're going to be singing some of our favorite carols. And I think the very favorite part of the service for me, we'll end the service with candle lighting. I hope you can join us. I know as this COVID situation uh, still has some of us uneasy, if you're not comfortable gathering in person, no, we'll also stream this service on YouTube and Facebook. So please join us either in person uh, or online, but uh, we look forward to sharing this special time tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. I'm glad we could get together today and let's close our time with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for the way you helped Mary and Joseph to make that unwanted journey, to go that tough 70 mile journey by foot. And we are so grateful that you got them to you got them safely to Bethlehem. Assure us, Lord, that when we face unwanted journeys, that you'll also safely get us 
where we need to be and that you'll be with us all the way. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for visiting with me. Let's talk again soon. May the peace of God be with you. Stay strong and stay safe. And my friends, uh, Merry Christmas. I hope uh, you all have, have, a, have a wonderful holiday with family and friends. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.